Hello everyone, I am Jana Kausti from Nepal. Welcome to you all on Janak Lecture Series in another different episode. And this is a part of Neuroanatomy. So we will be talking about the skull. The skull, it is a framework formed by the 22 different bones which articulate with one another and form a case-like structure to protect the brain, to protect the different special senses and the skull also provides the passage for the foot and the airway. So these are some of the basic functions of the skull. And we can see over here in this picture the skull in the context which is present on the cranial side being supported by the vertebral column. The skull without the mandible. The mandible which is also known as lower jaw in the colloquial term. So without mandible the skull it is also known as cranium. Some other refer the cranium with this definition. This skull it protects the brain whereas it also forms the framework of the face. So the skull it can be divided into two parts the cranial skeleton and facial skeleton. So cranial skeleton it is also known as neurocranium and the facial skeleton it is also known as visceropcranium or splanchnocranium. And to study this skull, we can study this skull from the different views. It can be studied from the five different views by looking the skull from the front, which is also known as norma frontalis. Norma, the word norma is derived from the word normal. In geometry, the normal means the perpendicular angle. So when we look at the skull from the different view at the perpendicular angle these are associated with the different views with the word norma like norma frontalis when we are observing the skull from the frontal side norma lateralis when we are observing the skull from the lateral side norma occipitalis when we are observing the skull from the occipital side because this is the occipital bone present on the posterior side and Norma verticalis when we are observing the skull from the top. We can study the skull from the inferior side which is known as norma basalis. So we will see this different views of the skull one by one. First of all, let's talk about norma verticalis looking at the skull from the top. This is the isolated skeleton that we can see over here. Let's see the skull from the top with the view is known as norma verticalis. So when you see from the top, you can see the different bones. So let's first of all talk about what are the bones that we can see on the top of the skull. So when we see the skull from the top, we can see the frontal bone anteriorly, which is single, and we can see the two pair parietal bone on the either side in between and we can see the occipital bone posteriorly. So these are the bones which we can see from the vertical view. The single frontal bone, two parietal bone and the single occipital bone posteriorly. Now we are going to talk about what are the sutures that unites these different bones with one another. The frontal bone, it is united with the two parietal bones with this suture which is known as coronal suture. So we are going to see the coronal suture. So this suture which extends from one side of the skull to the next side of the skull, it is known as coronal suture. It resembles the crown, that's why the name is given coronal suture and the suture which is present in between the two parietal bone this anterior posteriorly extending suture it is known as sagittal suture and there is another suture present posteriorly which unites this occipital bone with the two 
parietal bones. So this is a, it is lambda in shape. That's why the name is given lambdoid suture. And sometimes there is a suture present in between the frontal bone in about three to eight percent of population, which is known as metopic suture. So this is the anatomical anomalies, not the anomalies, anatomical variation present in the skull. It is so because the frontal bone it is formed by the two different ossification center, and these two bones later on get fused. But if it gets failed to fuse, there is the presence of the metopic suture. Now let's talk about the other features that we can see over here. So the point or meeting point between the coronal suture and the sagittal suture over here, right? This point it is known as bregma, B R E G M A. So this point over here, meeting point between the coronal suture and the sagittal suture, it is known as bregma. Similarly, there is another another point of intersection between the Sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture. So this point of intersection over here it is known as lambda. And there are other suture as well. To know that suture, we have to understand this very bone. This is the temporal bone. So this temporal bone it is articulating with the parietal bone superiorly and the occipital bone posteriorly. So the suture between this temporal bone and occipital bone it is present just posterior to this one of the process of the temporal bone which is known as mastoid process. That's why the suture is given the name occipital mastoid suture. So this part of the suture it is known as occipital mastoid suture and this very part of the suture this small part of the suture which is present in between the parietal bone and this temporal bone or say which is present near to the mastoid process this part of the suture it is known as parietal mastoid suture so the suture that we can see over here are the coronal suture, sagittal suture, lambdoid suture, occipital mastoid suture and parietal mastoid suture. And sometimes in the lambdoid suture the accessory bones may be present which are also known as warmian bones. They are usually more Presently present in the lambdoid suture. They are formed by the different center of ossification. So they are the extra bones present in the skull. But in this suture, we are not able to visualize those accessory bones present. And to talk about the other features of the normal verticalis, so when we see from the top, what we can see the vertical part of the skull it is more wider posteriorly and narrow anteriorly which seems almost oval in shape and this prominence we can see on the parietal bone when we see on the skull this prominence you can feel in your own head as well in the parietal bone so these are known as parietal prominence then the highest point of elevation on the skull which is present just about 4 to 5 cm posteriorly to this bregma it is known as vertex so vertex it is the highest point on the skull and these are the different and other features which we can see over here but they are not used not displayed in this picture they are the parietal foramina present on the parietal bone so there are two parietal foramina present on the either side of the sagittal suture present about two to four centimeter anterior to this lambda so parietal foramina are present about two to four centimeter anterior to lambda on the either side of the 
societal suture and the point on the societal suture in between the two parietal foramina it is known as obelian so obelian it is the point on the societal suture present in between the two parietal foramina but we can see over here in this 3d view now we are going to talk about the norma occipitalis so this is the view of the norma occipitalis we are observing the skull from the posterior side or we are observing the skull from the occipital side so in this view we can see the arc shaped structure of the skull so the skull seems arc shaped and the bone that we can visualize it is the part of the parietal bone two parts of the parietal bone occipital bone the part of the temporal bone which is shown in purple color and the prominence of the parietal bone which is shown in blue color over here that is the mastoid process so the bones which we see on the occipital view are the two parietal bone a single occipital bone, temporal bone or say peculiarly the squamous part of the temporal bone and the mastoid process of the temporal bones and of course these bones are united with the sutures so the sutures that we can see it is the posterior part of the sagittal suture we can see the lambdoid suture and of course we see the occipital mastoid suture which unites this different bones and we can see the lambda which is the point of intersection between the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture now let's talk about the occipital bone so when we see on the occipital bone we can see a prominence on its posterior side so this is known as external occipital protuberance and extending from the external occipital protuberance there is a crest on the bone which extends from the this very prominence from the external occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum so this is the very large opening present on the base of the skull so this crest is shown in this green color it extends from the external occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum and the name of this crest is external occipital crest they are given the term external because the similar structures are present on the internal side of the skull as well which we will see on the forthcoming lectures and there is a presence of the line that extends from the either side of the external occipital protuberance so this line it is known as superior nuchal line and you see h h here superior nuchal line which extends from the either side of the external occipital protuberance and there is another similar line which extends from the midpoint of the external occipital crest to the either side so it is represented with yellow color over here that is known as inferior nuchal line so these are the very prominent ridges that extends laterally superior nuchal line and the inferior nuchal line and sometimes there is a faint line present above this superior nuchal line that is known as highest nuchal line so we have the three different nuchal lines highest nuchal line superior nuchal line and the inferior nuchal line and just anterior to this occipital mastoid suture we can see the mastoid foramina present on the temporal bones so what are the structures passing to this different structure we will be talking about those on the upcoming lectures so to review what we see from the occipital side it is the occipital bone two parietal bones squamous part of the temporal bone and the mastoid process of the temporal bone 
and the sutures are lambdoid suture, occipital mastoid sutures, and we can see the mastoid, sorry, lambda, and other features are we can see the external occipital protuberance, external occipital crest, superior nuchal line, inferior nuchal line, and a faint highest nuchal line. Other structures are the mastoid foramina present on the temporal bones. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this was fruitful on the another different lecture. I'll be with another different episode talking about the skull. Thank you very much for watching.